Hi, it's me, Jen. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be covering the patient-driven payment model, mainly discussing physical therapy and occupational therapy. Physical therapy and occupational therapy have 16 different payment groups. Those groups are determined by two areas, the clinical category and the functional mobility score, section GG. The clinical category is determined by the primary diagnosis and the resident's main reason for admission to your facility. The four clinical categories are determined by the ICD-10 code, and the categories are major joint replacement or spinal surgery, other orthopedic, medical management, or non-orthopedic surgery, and acute neurological. It's very important that a thorough chart review is completed to ensure you do not miss any of the surgeries that may have occurred while the resident was in the hospital. Section I-0020, you're going to be selecting the resident's primary medical condition category, and this is going to be based on the primary reason for admission. So why did that resident come to your facility and require skilled care? That ICD-10 code is going to be placed in I-0020B. This section of the MDS is going to determine which clinical category the resident will fall into for reimbursement. The primary diagnosis ICD-10 or surgical procedures must be coded in the appropriate area on the MDS, section I-0020B or J-2100, J-2300, or J-5000 in order to receive the appropriate clinical category that your resident belongs in. CMS has provided facilities a mapping tool that helps you determine which ICD-10 should be coded and which clinical categories the residents fall into. So let's go online and take a look at that. This is the patient-driven payment model ICD-10 mapping tool that CMS has developed. This was on the CMS website. You can download it there. I will also have a copy on my website that you can go to and download as well. So you can see here that CMS has given the instructions on how to use this mapping tool. And today's date is July 28th. So you want to make sure you have the most recent tools available to you. CMS might update this again. But this tool has the clinical categories the speech language pathology comorbidities, the non-therapy ancillary ICD-10 mapping. And to navigate through this, down here at the bottom, you have these different tabs. So we're on the overview right now. Then we have clinical categories by diagnosis, speech language pathology comorbidities, and the non-therapy ancillary comorbidities. These are very important because they give you the exact ICD-10 that you need to code in order to receive the extra add-ons in the patient-driven payment model. So a lot of the sections will give you points depending upon what ICD-10s you have selected. But today we're talking about physical therapy and occupational therapy, so we're just going to go to the clinical category by diagnosis. So as you can see, you can click through these different tabs here, and they'll take you to that category. For this example, we are going to look in the clinical category by diagnosis. By description, by the category. So let's see how that works. First, we're going to search by ICD-10 code. So you see they'll let you sort by A to Z or by color, just the typical things we have in Excel. And then we have the option to select all of the ICD-10s or you can uncheck that box, which is what I want to do. I'm going to search for stroke. So I know that that code will begin with an I-69. 
Now, this tool will not let you do a dot zero one. It won't pick that up. So you'll leave all the extra off behind. So for this, we're just going to select the I-69. And as you can see, it starts here at the top. And it will give you the actual code right here. So I-69.8. 0, 0 would be your ICD-10 and so then you have the description and then you have the clinical category so for this instance we have the I-69.00 is an unspecified sequela of the non-traumatic subarachnoid hemorrhage if we were to code this in section I-0020B that would map us to the medical management category. So you want to make sure that you're looking at that because look, here is one, I69.039. We have a return to provider code. So what that means is if we were to code that in section I0020B, we would not get reimbursed for that code. It's a return to provider, so we would be unable to bill Medicare. CMS has stated that we will receive fatal warnings if we submit a record like that to CMS when you're reading your validation reports, you should catch that. And therefore, if your billing office is then using your ICD-10s to send the claim out, it should never get there because your MDS will be rejected. You can also search by description so as you can see here, it's on that select all again, but you could pick whichever one you wanted. You can scroll down. You can also type in and search that way. And you could search by clinical category. So if you wanted to see all of the return to provider codes, you could look that way as well. So you can see in the I-69s, here are all of your return to provider. If you wanted to see all of the return to provider codes for everything, you could hit select all and OK, and then you're going to get that big long list there. I highly recommend any time you go to complete your MDS and especially looking up those primary diagnoses that you look at this tool. Chances are if you receive a return to provider code, you need to start over and really dig into that chart and see what is the resident in your facility for that requires skilled services. Chances are, if you have that return to provider, that actual diagnosis probably doesn't meet skilled level of care because if it did, you wouldn't have that return to provider. So really dig in and look at why that resident is in your facility and it also has to be related back to the hospital stay, the skilled stay that the resident was in. So just make sure that you're watching for that. These codes will be the codes that will be used in order to map the areas that I talked about in the video. So hopefully all of you are familiar with this and hopefully you've seen this before. Search by clinical category one last time here, show you how that works. So if I wanted to see all of the ICD-10s that would get me into the medical management system, I would simply select that. And now I would be in the medical management category for any of these ICD-10s. And I do want to show you, and it's not to overwhelm you, but just show you how many codes there actually are that are the medical management. 65,064. So looking up these codes will take some time, but you really do need to dig into that chart and make sure we have the most appropriate code for the resident. I hope you found this exercise to be helpful. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below on the video and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. 
and please hit that subscribe button so you won't miss any of our further updates. In the upcoming weeks, we're going to be covering different sections of the patient-driven payment model so you can be ready and prepared when October 1st comes. As always, I hope you have an amazing day and thanks for learning with Jen.